Um, I saw this. I think this has happened again. Um, on a Qantas flight, I saw a video um, of a gentleman complaining that um, staff had made him move um, from where he had been sitting uh, to somewhere else on the plane. And um, it obviously seems to be a, a policy for um, airlines to routinely move um, male passengers. It's a policy that they enforce to move male passengers um, to other seating positions if children come or um, are being accompanied on their own. Um, or, and apparently, even if they are not, if their parents are there and they just want to, you know, sit, seat somewhere else, it's still a policy that they enforce, regardless of the parents are there or not. Uh, this is four airlines, uh, British Airways, Qantas, Air New Zealand, and Virgin Air. Wow. So the, these four, I mean, Antipodean, you know, Aussie, um, and New Zealand. And God, I mean, Australia sounds like it's get, coming, becoming a really, really, I don't know, because um, the Australia came across to me as a tough you know, geezer type place, no nonsense. But it seems to be the SJWs are really taking over Australia in a huge, in a big, big way. You know, the feminists are really, really digging their nails into Australia in a big way. Um, you know, Australia comes, you know, is a really tough place. Um, you know, some of the most poisonous snakes and animals, dangerous animals in the world. Um, you know, the kind of, you know, out in the bush. But it seems to me in the, in the, um, the cities um, of Australia, which are, you know, a very cosmopolitan, um, there, it seems to be, you know, a haven for SJWs. Uh, it's becoming like Canada, or it's become like Canada, to be honest with you. And um, I didn't realise that this is this has gone back quite a few years. Um, so they have a controversial seating policy, which discriminates against adult male passengers on the basis of their sex. The companies refuse to allow unoccup unoccupied children to be seated next to adult males on their flights, leading to crit criticism that they regard all men as a danger to children. The policies resulted in protests against the airlines and criticism by civil liberties and children's charities. Really? Uh, British Airways ended its policy in 2010 following a successful legal action undertaken by Mr. Fisher. Good. Um, wow. I didn't know that because I'd seen this policy, I'd seen this um, thing before. Um, But I'd seen it, it was, I think it was 2015, 16. Uh, I didn't realise it had gone back, way back to 2001. And it was, you know, a policy that BA followed. Um, in, um, sorry, let me just scroll this down. British Airways, in uh, March 2001, it was revealed that BA, British Airways had a policy of not seating adult male passengers next to unaccompanied children. Any person under the age of 15, even if the children's parents are elsewhere on the aircraft, this led to accusations that the airline considered 
all men to be potential paedophiles. And it says women to be incapable of such abuse. Oh, and women to be incapable of such abuse. So all men are, are paedophiles, but women are incapable of themselves of, of, of abusing children, which is, we know it's false. There are cases of it out there, but they don't get reported, or very rarely, because for some reason they're under cup, kept under cover, or this assumption that if women abuse children, it's not actually abuse. <sighs> The issue was first raised when a business executive had moved seats to be closer to two of his colleagues. A flight attendant then asked him to move because he was then sitting next to two unaccompanied children, which has, was a breach of BA company policy. The, I'm going to be honest... Uh, um, now, this wasn't the same as what I saw um, with the guy, a video that I saw with a guy from Qantas. Um, he, he actually sat next to two children. The seat that he had had been pre-booked. So the seat that he was sitting at was the seat that he was given. This guy actually moved. So he said the issue was first raised when a business executive had moved seats to be closer to two of his colleagues. So to be fair, if that wasn't his seat, he shouldn't have been, really shouldn't have been there. So in some ways, if that policy is in place, then, um, and it wouldn't be a problem. If on the airlines, they, if you were booking online, if two children are placed beforehand, there should be a cross next to it showing you can't book there. Okay. Um, if they want to put a woman next to there, that will happen when you arrive at the airline, at the airport. You know, or the accompanied children shouldn't be, should there should be a special, you know, I'm sure... <laughs> If there's two kids, then they should they could put the two children in two seats only. There are two seats only. If it's a three seater, don't put them in a three seater. If that's how you want to do the policy, because um, on the plane, you know, you generally got three seats. But if there are two seats, you could put those kids there only. If it's just the one kid, then yes, it's gonna it will could be a problem trying to find them a seat only um, but then maybe you have to put them in first class or put the kids in first class because um, nobody hardly ever very few people sit in first class and they could sit in an area where there could be a couple of attendants to attend to them and make sure that they're okay um, but they don't want to do it because they want to inconvenience in other passengers because they don't want to spend that money. Um, but still, um, to be accused as a man that you are a, you are a paedophile, not a potential, you are a paedophile. So children can't sit next to you. You can't sit next to a kid. Don't get me wrong. There was a there was a, um, a man in Germany. Um, the bendy buses that used to be in London, it was one of the bendy buses, and it showed a video of a young boy, 11 years old, and the video showed, I think the mother took the young boy on the bus three times. I think then on the fourth time, he was confident that he knew which bus to, I think where to get off. Okay, so the next time he was on the bus on his own, the video camera showed it. So the mother had put him on the bus. He sat uh, um, in the middle, near near the doors, 
and you could see he was very excited. He was on his own, his mother wasn't there, he was loving it. Then suddenly the guy got off, got on the bus and then sat next to him. As he sat next to him, uh, the guy must have looked around, probably saw that this boy was on his own, saw the boy was quite excited, started talking to him, started chit chat. So he talked to him. The video showed that the boy had got, then got off the bus with this man. Two stops before he was supposed to. And unfortunately, the young man, the young boy, was found dead um, a day later or whatever. Now, but the thing is, I'd never seen that before. I'd never heard that until I'd seen that. Really. That was a few years ago. But, I mean, a lot of children go on the bus on their own. They'll go with their, their friends or their brothers or their sisters or whatever. But millions of thousands and thousands of kids in the UK go on the bus on their own. And when they're on the bus, um, a guy or a woman will get on. They'll be sitting there peacefully. A person will sit down. I mean, if we're going to start doing this kind of policy, I think we need to do it wholesale. We need to say, right, a plane will only be filled by women, young girls, and if they're going to have boys under the age of 50, that plane will only have females. The next plane will only have males. And that's it. Um, maybe the solution would be to put cameras on planes as well. But doing what doing at the moment is wrong, regardless. Deal with each matter as they come along, but to do a wholesale ban um, and discriminate against all men is wrong. It doesn't matter how you look at this is this is the this is the um, feminized society that we are living in at the moment. The feminists are the ones that are pushing this agenda wholeheartedly. And if you don't follow their agenda, you're a misogynist. You hate women and you hate little children. Or you're a paedophile. Um, this led to accusations that the airline considered all men, all men to be potential paedophiles and women to be incapable of such abuse, which is nonsense. The issue was first raised, um, oh, sorry, I've already read through that, um, by the businessman who moved from, his, from where he was. A flight attendant then asked him to move because he was then sitting next to two unoccupied children, which was a breach of BA company policy. The executive said he felt humiliated as a result, stating I felt I was being singled out and that I was being accused of something. British Airways admitted that staff were under instructions to keep men away from children whenever, poss whenever possible because of the dangers of male paedophiles. This issue again came to prominence in 2005 following complaints by Michael Kemp who had been instructed to swap suites. Here you go. Here you go. This is the one, this is where uh, I have the problem. The, the other one is more... It, I, he didn't know the policy was, was there, I suppose, but still, he did move from his position. And generally on the plane, people don't like you. If you've been given a you know, seat A row five that's where you have to sit genuinely and you usually have to get permission to before you can move anywhere else uh who had been instructed to swap seats with his wife when on a gb airways flight the flight attendant informed him that for an adult male stranger to be sitting next to a child was a breach of the airline's child welfare regulations. This case was considered them the more unusual because the policy was applied even though the girl's 
parents were on board the flight. Michelle Elliott, director of the children's charity Kidscape. <laughs> uh, those of you in the UK who know Kidscape, that's gone under. Gone under. Uh, stated that the rule is utterly absurd. It grounded all men as potential sex offenders. Uh, in 2006, this is a good one. 2006 politician, and later London mayor, and later, I think, it's foreign secretary, um, Boris Johnson, criticised the company after the staff mistakenly attempted to. Oh, so staff mistakenly attempted to separate him from his own children on a flight. He stated that the that the those who created or defend such policies fail to understand the terrible damage that is done by the system of presuming guilt in the entire male population just because of the de tendencies of a tiny minority. Linking such discrimination to the reduced number right, good. Linking such discrimination to the reduced number of male teachers and therefore lower achievement in schools. Like others, jo uh, Johnson also raised the policy's flaw in ignoring female abusers and branded airlines with such policies as cowardly for giving into loony hysteria. This is not this is loony hysteria brought on by the feminist agenda and see he he i mean i don't know if this is true but it, he you know he's, he's he's he says uh linking the discrimination to the reduced number of teachers and therefore lower achievement in schools so the fact that it, th this is pr shown proof that the schools are rubbish today because it's all now feminized I mean, literally 85 to 90 percent of all teachers in schools are women. And yet women complain that they're discriminated against on every level in society. That the majority of teachers are women. The majority of, 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 um, of vets now are women. The majority of nurses are women. The 75 percent of um, Doctors, uh, graduates who did medical school uh, at one time, I think probably even are uh, women, and so on and so on. It's just like the media is virtually filled most nearly of women, and so on and so on. So, um, it, you know, the, the caring, child caring, dominated by women, you know. I heard of a story once of a guy he trained to be a, a, a child carer and he was in working in a, a child he'd been employed to work in this child nursery within three days he'd lost his job none of the women there could accept him working in that environment none of them and he lost his job within three days he'd been forced out of that that company that business and yet women complain about discrimination uh, <coughs> every day. A, a lot of it is nonsense. A lot of it is, um, we know it's nonsense. The Me Too movement is nonsense. You know, we know that a lot of those um, actresses have put themselves in that position themselves. So I have no sympathy for them, those people. I have none. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not interested. Um... But to continue, like others, uh, sorry, British Airways defended the policy, stating it had been implemented as a result of a request of, uh, as a result of requests from customers. The company claimed that it was responding to, to a fear of sexual assault. The fear of sexual said um i would 
I would love I mean I wish someone would one day have the money to be able to say I'm going to set up an airline and one is going to be for males and one's going to be for me and females. Female only airline flown by women, male only airline flown by men. That is the solution to the problem. Because if there is this fear of sexual assault, supposedly, which I've never seen when I've been flying, never seen it. And I've been flying since I was a baby. No, no, sorry. Came into the UK by ship, but when I flew out abroad, it's always it's always been by plane from the age of nine, and I've been quite a few times abroad by plane. And the only thing that I've had on planes is people arguing about, you know, bringing too much luggage. You know, this isn't hand luggage. This is a you know, massive rucksack. Why are you bringing this? That kind of thing. Um, but um, really, if, if, if women are the ones that are bringing this forward, then we need to start looking at how men and women, um, because it, it's obviously, this is a problem that when men, women want to be feel comfortable, great, have, you, have a separate airline flying women only. I would love to see that, personally. I would love to see a plane where guys can go on it only and women go on and you know and maybe the guys can smoke and drink on that plane where we can do whatever they want on their on their side where they're flying and guys can you know they might <coughs> can have you know it, it will just be a plane. then you'll have women's it will be a women's plane and women can they can have it in pink um if they want the interior can be pink if they want it the men's can be conservative or whatever it is they want and then that way there was not going to be a problem you know kids under the age of children boys under the age of 15 or 16 or let's say 17 can go on on the, on the women's play um and then if you're or even if you're 18 you go on the men's plane um when you get to the age of 18. um i think that's probably a solution I wish someone would, would bring that forward one day. Uh, court case. In January 2010, businessman Mr. Fisher from Luxembourg sued the airline for sex discrimination following an incident where he was forced to change seats as a result of the policy. Good. Thus separating him from his pregnant wife. Holy sweet Christmas. This is this mental illness in society today. Mental illness. Mr. Fisher was successful in winning compensation from British Airways with the company sex discrimination uh, in Mr. Fisher's case. BA paid just £2,161 in costs and £750 in damages which Mr Fisher donated to child protection charities. Well done, sir. Well done. In June 2010, BA said that the policy was under review. In August 2010, it changed its policy and began seating unaccompanied children in a non-discriminatory manner near the cabin crew. So in other words, um, I think the cabin crew are at the back, so that's where they put them at the back. So there's some seating at the back. But if there's a man sitting there at the back, well, that, then, the, the, then they should be monitoring. They would monitor them at the back of the plane. Uh, in uh, February 2006, British Airways announced the discontinuation of its unaccompanied minor service for children under the age of 12. What does that mean? I mean, 
So that means that when children go on the plane under the age of 12, so if they're 10 years of age, what happens there? If they're well, maybe they just don't allow kids to go on the plane on their own. It's as simple as that. So if you're under the age of 12, you, you know, maybe they say, sorry, you, you must go with, you, you've got to go with it. Oh, I see, right, okay, so what they're saying is that under the age of 12, the children must be, uh, must be now, you can't just put a kid on the plane on their own and then it will be accompanied, you know, that you will have to accompany your child under the age of 12. Over the age of 12, Whatever seat they're sitting at, they're sitting at, and that's it. Good. That's the way it should operate. I mean, obviously, you know, staff want to keep an eye on the kid if the kid's in distress for whatever reason, then they will, they will, they will point the problem out. It's you know, the child, especially at twelve, will know. Um, at fifteen, they will know if there's an issue. At fourteen, at thirteen, come on, my my nephew is six foot two. And he's 14. I mean, I'm six foot one. No, he's six foot three, sorry. At 14. When he was 13, he was he was taller than me. And I'm six foot one. <clears throat> so uh, and he can look after himself. <laughs> you know, he's a big, big lad. So obviously not all kids are that tall. But 13, 14, you know, 12, 13, I think is an age that children are reasonably especially, you know, beyond 12. They are finding themselves and um, can genuinely look after themselves. Qantas and, Air, Qantas and Air New Zealand. In November 2005, it was revealed that Qantas and uh, Air New Zealand have seating policies similar to that British Airways. The policy came to light following an incident in 2004 when Mark Wolsey, who was seated next to a young boy on a Qantas flight in New Zealand, was asked to change seats with a female passenger. This is the problem. You know, you as a paying passenger, you've paid for that seat. If you've gone online and you've actually paid for that seat online, and it doesn't show anything, oh, there's a child going to be sitting next to you. If you pay for that seat in good faith, that's, you know, for your duration, that's your seat. So then to be told that you've got to swap with a woman. How do you know that woman's a paedophile? Oh, no, it, it's not possible that a woman can be a paedophile. I'm sorry, but they can do. Yeah. Women can pray, haven't prayed on children, and they do. They do. But it's some another subject for another day. But why didn't they put this guy into first class? If they said, look, we're moving you to first class, I would I would move like a shot. If they said they were going to move you and upgrade you, not a problem. They do that. But they don't. They don't do that. And this is a policy they want to make sure... You as a male passenger are going to suffer because you're a male passenger. You are male. And you will be made to suffer. Hold on, boys and girls. Hold on. Had to uh, pause it there for a second. Right, let's get back to... Right. Um, so, Qantas and Air New Zealand have similar seating policies. Um... And a passenger, Mark Woolsey, who was moved because he was sitting next to a young boy uh, on a contract in New Zealand. Uh, so the, the steward informed him that it was the airline's policy that only women were allowed to sit next to un unoccupied, un unoccupied children, accompanied to unaccompanied children come on mate sort yourself out mr wolsey a shipping manager stated he felt the policy totally discriminatory and the new zealand herald suggested 
to the airline that the implication of the policy was that it considered male passengers to be dangerous to children. New Zealand's Green Party stated that the policy was discriminatory and reported the matter to the Human Rights Commissioner. On learning of the policies, several processes occurred, including a 22-hour treetop protest by double amputee uh, Kevin Gill in Nelson. He stated that the policy could be the thin end of a wedge with men soon banned from sitting next to children at sports events and other forms of public transport. Well, that is nonsense. Because, I mean, I'm not saying what he's saying. He's, 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 he's absolutely correct. If they want to do that, and they want to ban... I mean, as I said before, if this is the policy that these lunatic, far-left, feminist, lesbian twats want to go down, by all means go down that route. Let's go down the whole hog. Male-only carriages. Male-only buses. Male-only planes. Male-only offices. So that means that women and children, uh, young children, are all on the plane, all by with the with you know themselves. Men are all by themselves. Then there won't be a problem. Sporting events, male only sporting events, women only sporting events. Okay, I mean I'm advocating that for Wimbledon. I think Wimbledon should now have a, um, a women's week where the women's play. And then they should have a male only with the men play. And um, you go to those events at your own risk. So if you're a female, you want to go and watch the men's tennis, you go at your own risk, etc. etc. Let's let's do that. We need to start doing that. Um, Gil also resist, raised the issue of what would happen if the policy had been race based and targeted ethnic minorities rather than men we don't have to what, what's the purpose of that they always bring up that nonsense you know we know what would have happened there isn't a need to bring that up this is this is about men all men um, it could happen to a, a black man a Chinese man you name it um, the policy given to the issue Sorry, the publicity given to the issue in 2005 caused others to publicly describe to publicly describe their experiences. For example, uh, Bethlehem Fire Officer Philip Price revealed he had been forced to switch seats in 2002 on an airline. Uh, sorry, on Air New Zealand flight to, to Christchurch. This has been going on for years, mate. It's a quiet thing that the airlines have been doing for many, many years. Uh, Cameron Murphy, president of the NSW Council for Civil Liberties, criticised the policy and stated that there was no basis for the ban. He said it was wrong to assume that all adult males posed a danger to children. The policy has also being criticised for failing to take female abusers, abusers into consideration as well as ignoring incidents of children who commit sex offences. There you go. As with the British Airways case, critics such as school teacher Kevin Squire made the link between such policies uh, and wider problems in society such as the shortage of male teachers, with others drawing parallels with the case of Rosa Parks. <laughs> Come on! Well, I don't know. Um, I suppose, yeah. 
Oh, sorry, I take that back. Maybe, yeah. There are there are parallels. I think. Yeah. Sorry, I'll take that back. Mm -hmm. Um. It is a discriminationary issue, so yeah, we, we uh, actually, sorry, I take it back fully, because I mean, it was the same thing, you know, blacks, this is where you sit at the back, and this is where you, you can't move uh, from this position, if a white man wants to sit here, or a white woman wants to sit in that position, because all the seats are taken, then you're supposed to give up your seat, and stand, because that white person was more important than the black person, and they needed that seat their legs were tired so yeah there is a parallel there i take that back i apologize sorry geezers because this is the, the problem when it comes to men's issues people laugh about it which is i did um it could be because it's a social construct that um men's issues are not important socially men's are not issues are not important men die more men die from prostate cancer than women die of breast cancer and also women get double the funding for breast cancer research than men don't do for prostate cancer they get double yet more men die from prostate cancer you go figure some have defend here we go uh here we go some have defended the policy with new south wales commissioner for children and young people um stating um uh, miss clovette stating that there were more male sex offenders than than female but how do you know that many it's it's you know, I, for many, many years, I had this impression that domestic violence was all committed by men. Women don't commit domestic violence, so it's 100%. Then I saw a study that showed that 35% of male, um, of men in Australia suffer from domestic violence. Now, Domestic violence doesn't now just mean hitting. It can be psychological as well as hitting. I mean, there's a number of women that hit their husbands with the frying pan or go at their husbands with a knife, you know, um, or abuse their husbands verbally. That is now called, uh, you know, a, a assault, you know. Um, when a woman nags a man consistently, isn't that assault? No, it's not class assault. It's not, and, and women, some women are joke when he's called nagging. But women hate the word neurotic because it's been used, apparently it was used a lot for women. And yet, this Clovet states that there are more male sex offenders than women. Where are the stats? There are none. She's just made the assumption. And in the absence of any other test, it's one way in which the airline can reduce the risk of children travelling alone. She believes that the likelihood of an, at an attack was rare, but not impossible, claiming it's only a few men who do this sort of stuff. But when they do, it, they diminish all men. That was a complete, total fucking shit. This is the problem that you've got with people who are mentally disturbed, like her. It's only a few men who do this sort of stuff. But when they do it, it they diminish all men. Really? Let's move on, people. The, the, you work out that statement, what she's just said. It just, it's stupid. Stupid. This is what we've got to work with. This woman is probably a lesbian. Again, I'm assuming, because of for what she's just said. 
she's probably she will, is a feminist i will put money on it she's a feminist and she's a uh, a far leftist okay uh air new zealand spokesman david Jam uh, jameson said the company had no intention of reviewing the policy and acknowledged that it had been in place for many years so he stated that the company not in, is, has no in, had no intention of ruining the policy, no intention whatsoever, and it had been in policy for many many years. So a lot of guys have been embarrassed; they have not said anything; they've just gone about their business. So you see, the thing is, they talk about this Me Too movement where this thing has been going. You know, women have been raped left, right, and centre in Hollywood and all this kind of business. When, to be honest with you, they were complicit. You know, many of them did what they did to get further up the ladder. So they went in the director's catch. And it was a known joke. Everybody knew about it. And yet, still, when we went into Hollywood, desperately become, you know, um, you know famous. And that they would do whatever they need to do. In August 2012, the controversy resurfaced when Daniel Mac Lukish Luki let's move on a nurse had to swap suite seats with a female passenger on a Qantas flight after the crew noticed he was sitting next to an unrelated girl travelling alone the person concerned felt discriminated and humiliated uh, before the flight guests as a paedophile a Qantas spokesman defended the policy as consistent with that of other airlines in Australia and around the globe really really what other airlines um follow this policy because let's have a look uh, let's see if we can let's have a look um I mean, if other airlines are following this policy, oh, here we go. Should male passengers be allowed to sit next to unaccompanied children? This is CNN in 2015. Uh, this not seen it. But anyway, it'd be interesting to try and chase that up and follow it up. So I'm just going to pause this for you people. Okay, I paused the recording because I went and got something to eat. Uh, yum yum. So uh, let's have a look. So we ended with uh, <laughs> a Qantas spokesman defended the policy as consistent with that of other airlines in Australia and around the globe the ones they're talking about if is BA so that's around the world around the globe in oh and I think Virgin as well hmm. in 2012 it became public knowledge that Virgin Australia had also implemented this policy I'll just call him Johnny a 33 year old firefighter from Sydney was told to move seats by a virgin flight attendant when when asked why the flight attendant cited policy cited policy and uh, Johnny told and told Johnny you can't sit next to two unaccompanied minors the attendant then asked a female passenger can you sit in this seat because he's not allowed to sit next to minors a public 
backlash in Twitter prompted Virgin uh, Australia to review its policies banning men from sitting next uh, sitting beside unaccompanied children on flights. Um, you see, this this has gone under, been been happening for years and years and years, and nobody cares because it's guys. Look at Boris Johnson. Um, was, um, you know, separated from his children. This is very, very unnecessary. And if this policy continues, because you've got guys who are manginers, you've got guys, and they probably identify as a woman and um, haven't come out yet. And so they see this policy as just and, uh, you know, and it, when they identify as a feminist, you know, they're literally a lost cause. I mean, although Warren Farrell identified himself as a, as a feminist when he was younger, but then when he did some proper research and read things properly, he began to realise that actually he was living in a twilight zone. He was living in the matrix so this assumption that there is male privilege um, the male privilege um, is to provide for the for his family he looks after his family they come first so any money that he earns or has been traditionally what does it go on the family when he asks for a pay rise who is the person biting in the back to ask for that pay rise it's was the wife. Come on, you need to ask for a pay rise. We've got a young kid on the way. We need more money. You need to ask for that pay rise and we need it. But nobody talks about that. They always always talk about oh it, men are the, the one who always ask for the uh, seem to be asking for the pay rise. Is it against the law? It, the men are the ones generally are being pushed by an external force to ask for that pay rise. But no studies have been done statistics on, you know, um, why men ask for more for a pay rise. Why not? They want more money. Everybody wants more money. But what I will say to you is this. I personally think that when a man is working and he's single, and he doesn't have any money to spend on anybody but himself, he may go abroad and, you know, and do certain things, it comes back, and I, I've known a number of people who worked in the company I worked for, a lot of the guys were single, and the one thing you could say that they had, they were well off, because they weren't married, they didn't have any kids, they didn't have any bills, they had no worry, because they were not spending their money on somebody else. You saw them, you know, um, I mean, there's one guy, he, he, he was single, never been married, and he used to drive into work, and he used to park his vehicle on the meter, and I think in those days they were, I think you could park for eight hours consistently, and um, so what he used to do is bring his van in, and he literally, car, sorry, his car in every single day. He would park his vehicle. And when he finished, he would go walk to his car, get into his car and drive home. And also, I mean, back in those days, the, the, they were not as expensive as they are now. But he could afford it because he didn't have any kids. Um, he was paying the mortgage on the house with no problem at all. He was paying electricity, everything. So, what I'm trying to say is this, if these policies need to be highlighted, they need to be taken to court, like um, Mr. Fisher did in Luxembourg. They need to be taken to court in this country, in America, 
wherever this occurs. You see, because discrimination doesn't occur supposedly with black people, with Chinese people, or with women. Men get discriminated against as well. Okay? On a number of levels. Okay? A woman who commits a crime that's exactly the same as a man will get far less a sentence than, uh, than a man. Far less a sentence. You know, there's talk of um, women should be allowed to have their children uh, living in prisons with them in that horrible environment. Uh, although women's prisons are probably less dangerous, I don't know. But why? You're in prison for a reason. You're, you're being punished for doing something wrong. And um, you shouldn't be allowed any more special pleasures because you're a woman. But this is the problem. You're getting, you know, women are now saying they want uh, tampons, tampons uh, as, as to be a free um, item for women to walk in to chemists and get be given to for free. Why? I, sh I need to shave every day. That means I should be able to walk into um, a chemist to get uh, some uh, razor blades for free because general shaving is inconvenience for me and a nuisance, but I've got to do it. You know, why should women think they can walk in and get free tampons? Why do women think they should, should get free uh, childcare on uh, national health? It's nothing to do with me. Your, it's your child. You know, I don't want to pay for that. If you want to pay more tax, there should be a system where you can pay that more tax. Okay. You know. Then fine. Go ahead. I've actually seen, um, I think you can get 30 hours of free childcare. I've seen it on the banner somewhere. Um, who does that benefit? The woman. It should only be, if women want to, to go to work, they have to organise that childcare, and they have to pay for it themselves. Sorry? I mean, listen, when a man goes to work, he brings his home money back for his family. Well, it was traditionally that. He, you know, paid for this, you know, the, the woman stayed at home, looked after the home, looked after the children, organised coffee mornings, went to the gym, uh, ran a little her own business as well, you know, generally as well. I mean, they were, back in the days, they were in the 1870s, 70s, 70s, the women just didn't stay at home just doing that. There was She had a business running. Some of them had a, a, a little business running. Um, you know, if they could do knitting or, or clothing or whatever it is, they, they were, that's why it was called cottage industry, because they worked from home. The husband would go to the mine or to the field or whatever. Um, I think this, but getting back to the British Airways and the Qantas and the Virgin and, and so on, it, it it just goes to show you the that there's discrimination on many different levels in society. But the discrimination that seems to be consistently focused on are women, especially white women, uh, ethnic minorities. Men's, especially white men, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter about you, about you, your issue. We're not, we don't care about you. Anything that happens to you is not, it's not, um, it, it, it's, it's your fault. It's your problem. Yet, um, as I said earlier, Prostate cancer kills more men than women who've got breast cancer. Yet the campaign for breast cancer has been huge. The funding for research and development for breast cancer is double the men. What's going to happen now that they, see, that they show that the figures of prostate cancer for men is more than women? There'll be a little bit more money, but not way enough. Where are the screening programs for, for, for men? There are very little. 
And there are only one or two companies that do. <clears throat> there should be more men going to their doctor, be encouraged to go to their doctor. We need to see these ads, they're not being shown. We need to see them in billboards, they're very rarely being shown. We need to see them in newspapers, on the internet, they're very, very rarely shown. Because the government is not putting any funding in to do the research. Because men are dispendable. Men can be kicked in the nuts at any time. And because men get up and carry on, soldier on, as they do, when they occasionally bring these things, these issues up and highlight it to people, then people realise, hold on a minute, I thought discrimination only occurred purely to women and, and, and ethnic minorities. No, it doesn't. It also occurs to men. Well, I've said my bit. Thank you for listening.